Hey everybody, I am on the derrick. I've got to go off the island, so I thought why not jump on the derrick for a bit of fun. Firstly, thank you very much to the people that join me over on Patreon. Um, I'm hoping it's going to make all the difference. So if you feel like supporting me with your Patreon, please do. And if you don't, no worries, just keep enjoying the videos as you do. But I just ask, leave a like if you wouldn't mind. Anyway, onwards with the video subject, which is journalists. The pieces of shit that they are. Not all of them, to be fair, but a lot of them. The thing, the thing is, it's kind of peeing me off a lot, looking at the news. And I know all of us are sick and tired of looking at the news because you just so much rubbish in it. And so much, you know, mis misreported stuff. And it's just so wrong because there is a journalistic code that journalists are supposed to adhere to. Now, I, I can't express every single thing that's in that code. It's quite a short list, really. And it's all pretty straightforward. You know, like, seeking the truth. Don't just take the first thing that you've heard. Actually, like, if you're going to report something, check into it see if it's the truth see if it if it adds up trying to minimize harm to people don't make a story out to be worse than it is just to try and sell your story if it's going to impact um that person more than it should uh, there's another thing that's like of accountability and, and transparency is to you know to be open and honest about what you're doing but also be accountable for your actions also willing to go back and correct things if you realize you got it wrong and as this gets worse and worse I just get the feeling that it's time that a journalist start being held accountable for the stuff they're reporting. But the problem is, I think, that their bosses want them to make stuff like this because it's what sells papers and gets some clicks. You know, as I said before, the news has turned to clickbait because it works. They've also turned against people on social media, or on sort of, you know, non-mainstream media platforms like PewDiePie, because basically he's a threat to some of the things they do. And I don't see how PewDiePie is a direct threat to, you know, the, um, the Wall Street Journal. It's a very different thing. He does do news now, yeah, but whatever. That is, I don't think people are classing him to be a news source. And this isn't anything new. I mean, I remember back to, like, when there was Margaret Thatcher and, and um... Oh, what was his name? Prime Minister, what was his name? The dweeby grey-haired one. It was a spitting image. A lot. But back then, it wasn't fake news, this is fake news, it was spin. That's all anyone can say, oh, you're a spin doctor, you're just spinning it. Politicians do spin. You know, that's why they don't give honest answers to questions. They just try and answer a question that wasn't asked or give an answer that doesn't answer anything. We all know, like... I and mean, the other thing is I've noticed with journalists is they just copy Jeremy Paxman. If you remember, there was an interview many years ago with Jeremy Paxman where he just kept asking the same question because it was basically a yes or no answer and the guy kept avoiding it. And he, he asked him, like, 42 times. I've seen lots of other people trying to do that, but they try and do it with a question that doesn't have a direct answer, or it's, it's a stupid question to be trying to do that with. And I just can't help but think that these people can't have a moral responsibility to think about how what they're saying is going to reflect on people, because they're held to a code. You know, like the Hippocratic Oath for doctors, they have certain things they're supposed to abide by. I think also it's been aided by things like social media, because a lot of people now get their news via social media through suggested things and because of the echo chambers you get on social media um, it just reinforces their view whichever way that is and that can also be influenced by showing them different stuff um, depending on in which way you might want people to sway and I think we're already seeing the damage of what this is doing to society I mean I'm not blaming everything that's happened with uh, Brexit on that but there's a lot of a lot of it is misinformation, and a lot of the arguments people have is, is based on a lot of misinformation and stuff that isn't necessarily true, and, and there seems to be very few people trying to give balanced views. They've always got an, an agenda, they've always got a side. Even if they're trying to not look like they have, they'll, they'll go to one big point of saying all this about this side, and then if there's anything to try and defend that from the other side but they don't really want to do it, they'll just mention a couple of very poor arguments and miss out the really important ones that kind of ruin the original argument. And it's wrong. It is wrong upon wrong upon wrong. And then we've got all these, you know, people like 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 PewDiePie has done and Philip DeFranco and and there's other ones like, well, we're now an independent news. We don't we don't do all the spin and all the bullshit. Uh, and if we give opinion, then we we try and explain that is our opinion. And, and it's like, there shouldn't be a need for this. There is an entire code in place to stop this from happening. And this code isn't new. So they obviously knew what damage a journalist could do by misreporting stuff a long time ago. But no, we're still dealing with it worse and worse year by year, day by day. You know, things like minimise harm and don't cause panic. Do you remember the way that 9-11 was reported? I remember being 
very clearly been coming home from school and seeing everything as it unfolded and sat there and watching this thing happen time and time and time and time again. They replayed the planes flying into the building like, like hundreds of times. There would have been massive psychological damage to people, particularly people who are from, whoa, whoa, it's muddy, from that sort of area because it's something, you know, it's, it's close to them, it's, it's recognisable. You know, it's shocking to anyone that sees it and sort of recognises the building or knows roughly where it is, but if you, if that's your area, if that's where you live, it's going to be massively, massively affecting you. And, and the buildings are so, so iconic in America that they were always used, you know, like in films, they'd always make sure to use a, a skyline shot and it would always be the Twin Towers to show, oh, look, this is New York, more so than the Statue of Liberty, it seems. Or if they wanted to be less, less um, in your face and a bit more subtle with the reference. And I look at all this that's going on and I'm thinking, how do we get out of this? How do we avoid this? And obviously people say, well, you know, I just don't pay attention to these, these things anymore. And I agree, I don't. But I'm also, I'm not an expert on stuff and I'd like to be able to get quick access to information that was reliable and had actually been, um, you know, you know you can trust what a person's saying rather than questioning if they have some agenda or whether they're being paid to say something or whatever like that. A lot of this is ego-related, um, one-upping, wanting to be the one with all the information, I'm right, you're wrong, no, you misunderstand, you think you know, but you don't know. And then there's people like, oh, you think you know, but you don't know, but you don't know that you don't know, because it's actually this, you've been, you've been double bluffed. Why are they not being held accountable? If one of the rules is accountability and transparency, well then, why aren't they ever being held accountable for it? They are directly going against what they're supposed to be doing. They are causing harm to the public in places, misinforming people, trying to sway political uh, arguments. The thing is, I always look at the future progression of this thing. Like, okay, so before social media, did we know how damaging social media would become to people? No, we didn't. Would we still have launched social media had we known? Maybe not in the same way. But then again, so many people use social media because they love it. For all of its downsides, for all of the problems that it causes, people want it enough that it's worth it to them. Maybe that's a similar argument with AI. It's like, yeah, AI could be a bad idea. However, it's so powerful at all that we're not going to not go down that road. So it's rather than being like, oh, we shouldn't do that, forget that argument. It's not going to not happen. They're going to do it. It's going to be, it is where everything's headed. We're going to do it. How it ends up, what they do, they might be, you know, what rules are put in place to try and control these things. We don't know, but the fact of the matter is, it is unstoppable. You know, as much as people say, oh, this is not a good idea, we shouldn't really do this, I don't actually think it's ever going to have an impact on the fact that it is a useful thing. And social media is a fun and useful, a useful thing, even for all its downsides. Private keep off. No ishing! No ishing. This raft is for the use of uh, LHWSA members only. It's basically a bus shelter on a barge. The reason this has come up, other than obviously this is just the topic of the day with everything currently, because you know the UK is so hyped up about the media, is so so whipped up. Because I think a lot of the, the, the UK, you know, where everyone's well, not everyone, but there's been lots of people saying, look, it's time for the UK people to uh, to come together and, and listen to each other a bit more, and um, you know, be a bit more reasonable, and less less just closed-minded. Things don't have to be so polarised, you know, you're not just in that team or that team, you can just be whatever. The newspapers have definitely been whipping people up, like really riling people up on purpose. They'll make a story to try and piss off a certain group to make them do something to make them then prove a point about themselves, blah, 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 and it's just so ridiculous. It's like, yeah, the reason why I'm saying this now, other than just um, the fact that it's currently a very top, current topic, is also because I've been, a few people have suggested you know, where I've recently started a Patreon and stuff, a lot of people, well, you need to make videos that are more, you know, they're more controversial. Just accept it, Spicy. You can't keep doing the, the reasonable thing. You've got to start playing them their own game. You've got to start talking about controversial subjects. And, and people have said, you know, you do offer a good way of into it because you give a balanced view from both sides and stuff like that. You're a good person to talk about these things. But the thing is, if that is one of my strengths, one of my other strengths is also the fact that I basically refuse to talk about things unless I fully know what I'm talking about because I am very much of the opinion which is if you don't really know the subject shut up now with some things that doesn't need to be so strict but when it comes to other stuff when it's a very hot debate and it's very important and it might sway people's opinions in directions me misinforming, me misinforming someone accidentally about something because I've misunderstood something is not 
good and I don't want to do that and that's as I say why I've kind of avoided doing the really controversial subjects because I don't feel like I know enough about it and to find out about it you just you can't just go to the news sources and try and you know read article after article from different sides and, and try and form an opinion from that way because I don't trust a single one of them I think the one from one direction the one from the other direction yeah but they, they are from different directions but they've got lies and crap and amongst all that stuff as well and kind of to that end I have I also noticed quite a few people saying about you know oh, well patrons got problem patrons this patrons they're a piece of shit blah 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 because of some stuff that's recently happened. Now, I don't really know a huge amount, though. I know a little bit about a little bit. And some of the cases seem like it was like, well, yeah, I totally get why that person would be removed. Any platform would remove them for doing that. Now, keep in mind, I don't know who you're thinking of, and we may not be thinking of the same person, so don't think that you can apply that to someone who isn't in that position. But you know there's been people who've been removed for very fair reasons. And the thing you have to remember is, YouTube do the same goddamn thing. I am personally in the opinion, and I think a few people are, which motorcycles have fallen into a category of not favourable content. And the reason that is, is because most of the most viewed content on YouTube regarding motorcycles is people being absolute idiots. It's not people making motor vlogs, but because we're in the same group, because we use the same tags, well, motorcycles tags, you get put into the same group, and it doesn't matter if you change all that, if you're talking about motorcycles, it knows! And YouTube's closed down the accounts and the livelihoods of many, many people in the past because of stuff like that. But of course it is very stupid and dangerous for a platform to censor someone after they said they wouldn't censor people. You know, because once you do it once, you've just made that responsibility of the whole site yours, rather than leaving it to the people to decide. Like, everyone's, you know, it's, someone says something they don't agree with, well, no one's going to support them or follow them unless they agree with their extreme views. In which case, well, that's not going to change the opinion of the people who have those extreme views anyway. Shutting this person down will only enforce it and push it underground. Again, I'm talking hypothetically here and not about any one particular person. And the other thing is they're saying about oh, how um, patrons are going to be taking, you know, they're going to be taxing people, they're going to be taking more money. YouTube, okay, take 40%. Patrons, I understand it, take 10 and, you're, and people are saying to me, oh, you don't want to use Patreon. You don't want to use Patreon, you know, they're bastards. Yeah, in some cases they have done some stuff they shouldn't have. But it's a very small minority of the majority of people. I mean, look at the amount of channels and shows that are, are funded by it, and it works perfectly for them. It's not, they're not involved in the politics. So all of that is basically to explain why I don't go too controversial with subjects. Yes, I know, I know there are views down that road, and I know there are also views down, you know, the clickbait lines and stuff like that but I'd rather keep doing it the way I did it and, and make the videos I feel like I can make. It's, it takes a long time for me to get to the point where I feel like I want to talk about a subject and I know enough about it to say it, and if I don't, I end up making a video like this that I keep having to put caveats into. And part of the reason of that is because I actually care what people think in the sense of I don't want to misinform people and I like to have a discussion and a debate with people rather than an argument which is just two people not listening to each other and just going off. So my leaving point of all of this is not about any one particular subject other than where do you think journalism is going to go? Is it going to come to a point where someone government body-wise is going to have to stand in and say, wait, you're going to now be held accountable if something's not correct? But the problem is then so many subjects don't have a correct answer. There is an opinion depending on how, you, how harsh or lenient you are to any particular one thing and how your preconceived notions about stuff affect your opinion. Where's the media going to go? Are we just going to keep spiralling down this hole of just uselessness and we'll have more independence? Or what? I don't know. I'd love to know what you think. Anyway, catch you next time. If you enjoyed this video and the other content on the channel, please consider following the links in the description to show your support.